I would like to call to order the June 20th regular board meeting of the Moundsview School Board. Good evening and welcome. The first order of business is item 1.2, adoption of the agenda. I would entertain a motion. So moved. Second. The agenda has been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. We will move to item 2.1, announcements. Uh, we'll start with the gifts and Shauna. All right, thanks, Diane. There were four gifts for schools and programs received this period for a total of $2,090. And there were 12 gifts received for the Ralph Reader Food Shelf this period for a total of $29,982. It's recommended that the board accept these gifts and extend our thanks to the donors. Thank you, Shauna. Um, upcoming meetings, uh, there will be no um, board meetings uh, the month of July. Uh, the next regular meeting of the school board will be Tuesday, August 15th at 7 p.m. here at the District Center. At this time, we'll move to agenda item 2.2, Superintendent's Report. Great. Um, thank you, Diane. I do have a couple things uh, tonight, and, and what I want to do is highlight two resolutions that are going to be part of the uh, consent approvals this evening. Uh, the first, I want to mention Summer Academy. Um, it was back in 1978 that uh, the North Suburban Summer Academy was created, um, and that academy was designed to provide opportunities for high potential uh, students in unique, in intensive, and exciting programs. Uh, it was sponsored through the cooperative efforts of 12 Minnesota school districts, uh, which were Anoka Hennepin, Centennial, Columbia Heights, Forest Lake, Fridley, Matamidi, Moundsview, North St. Paul, Maplewood, Oakdale, Roseville, St. Anthony, New Brighton, Spring Lake Park, and White Bear Lake. Uh, now on this year, on Thursday, May 11th, the executive board of the Summer Academy held a meeting, and at that meeting, they actually uh, reached a recommendation that due to some ongoing financial concerns and declining enrollment, uh, they are recommending that Summer Academy be dissolved after this summer's session. Uh, leadership from that group then reached out to all of the member superintendents from the districts uh, I highlighted. Um, and they were really part of their reach out there was just to let us know that this was uh, a difficult decision for them. It wasn't taken lightly. And in fact, they said it was with a heavy heart uh, that they were recommending disillusion for that, uh, for that program. Uh, but tonight, the reason I bring it up is I want the public to be aware the school board uh, is going to accept that recommendation and adopt a resolution to uh, formally dissolve Summer Academy. Uh, I think it's important to note, though, that while Summer Academy will not be uh, an option moving beyond this summer, uh, as a district, we remain fully committed to making sure that we have programming uh, for our students. Um, and we'll remain uh, committed to having ongoing activities for our, our students uh, in the future. We've already started conversations with our staff to identify what opportunities might be available moving forward that would enrich and extend uh, our students' learning experience, and look for opportunities to meet the uh, unique needs of our high potential students well beyond the 2023 school year. So if you hear uh, in the community um, conversations around Summer Academy No More, while that is true, our district remains committed to providing opportunities for our students in the future. I was a member of that first class in 1978. In 78, going to Summer <laughs> Academy. And Creative and, writing. Yep. <laughs> and, and we did a couple of courses in the eight, early 80s, yeah. I think. Yeah. Photography and uh, computer programming. <laughs> and so we'll look for opportunities to continue those types of programs moving forward. Um, the other one I wanted to highlight is uh, the annual Minnesota State High School League resolution. Now this is something we do every single year uh, as a board because we are a member of the league. Uh, each year our high schools join, join more than 500 other member schools from across the state and complete that resolution for membership. Uh, the annual commitment, obviously, it, it affirms our intent to be uh, a member of the State High School League and follow the rules, policy, and bylaws they set forth. This year, uh, the League has reached out to member schools and is asking all of the school boards to play a partnership video uh, at the meeting when they approve this annual membership. Uh, the video highlights the League's three main goals, which are providing safe, respectful, inclusive environments, 
recruiting and retaining coaches, officials, and school administrators, and maintaining a focus on education-based activities and sports. Um, as we all know, high school uh, arts, athletic, and activity offerings really are an integral part of the student experience for uh, students attending Moundsview Public Schools. That's why we've uh, proposed a district operational plan goal for next year uh, that will allow us to complete that comprehensive review and evaluation of our athletics and activities programs. We're going to be looking for strengths, gaps, and opportunities to make recommendations for improving that student experience. So in that spirit and in spirit with partnership with the, the high school league, uh, we're going to honor their request and, and we're going to ask that we uh, play that video and then later in the consent agenda uh, you will actually adopt the resolution to be an active member and partner with the Minnesota State High School League along with the other uh, member schools from across the state. So at this time I, I'd ask that uh, the tech group play that video. It's all about sportsmanship, right? Coaches coach, officials officiate, our players play, and our fans cheer. That is the partnership that we're looking forward to. It's all around safety, it's all around sportsmanship, and it's all around having a great time in our facilities. The Minnesota State High School League is a dynamic partnership of more than 600 schools reaching all communities and corners of the state. Our mission is to provide educational opportunities in fine arts and athletics for all students. Everything we do is focused on supporting, growing, and improving our students' experiences through activities. As we move into a new school year, our ongoing work is focused on three main efforts. Our top priority is to promote and support safe, respectful, and inclusive environments for participation and competition. We want all of our high schools to provide activities and events that are free from discrimination, harassment, and marginalization. That's why the Minnesota State High School League recently led a collaborative effort of seven educational organizations across the state. Together We Make a Difference was designed to amplify the voices and advance the vision of our students to ensure respectful and safe schools and environments. After attending the conference, I really hope that as a small school, we're more inclusive and we include everybody and that everybody gets to be involved and find what they enjoy. The Code of Conduct was basically treating everybody with respect, the same respect you want to receive. Being kind, not like being rude to somebody because they are not from the same background as you, like ethnics, religion, be inclusive. It's important to feel safe because within that you're able to perform the way you want to and you're able to give the results you want to. In my personal opinion, when I'm not comfortable, I'm not giving all I can. Playing in an environment where like, you feel comfortable, you feel safe, you're going to be playing at your best because you don't have to worry about other distractions. It takes a team of dedicated adults to provide the kind of programming our students deserve. That's why we're focused on recruiting, retaining, and supporting our coaches, officials, and administrators. As an education-based activities director, there's nobody more important than the coach or advisor for our students, whether it's in the fine arts or athletics, because we know that each child is one caring adult away from changing their path of their life. If you look at or listen to any successful person talk about how they got there, they never did it alone. There's always a mentor, and so we need those types of leaders in our schools today to help our young people understand what it means to be a strong, supportive person within their community. I enjoy officiating for the people. The people that I work with, the camaraderie with them is the thing that makes it enjoyable. There are coaches that make it enjoyable. There are students that make it enjoyable. We're somebody to help make the game better. We're, we're there to make the athletic contest better. We're always looking for new officials. I think just from gaining awareness and visibility on the role of officiating and how important it is. So definitely I encourage anybody that is interested in officiating to reach out and we have a lot of resources and a team to help out. Sometimes the most enduring lessons our students learn 
happen through activities beyond the classroom. So it's our goal to focus on enhancing the education of students through a broad range of opportunities that extend the traditional curriculum. When alumni come and talk to me, the one thing I always hear is, you know, they remember those big moments, but they also remember what led up to them. Everything that they've done to prepare and how those coaches and those experiences have helped prepare them. These events and experiences will stay with our students for their entire life. The relationships that they build in these extracurricular arts and athletic activities, the competition, the sportsmanship that they learn, all of these things will help them be successful citizens, help them be successful employees, business owners, and just positive contributing members to society. At the Minnesota State High School League, it's about more than membership, it's about partnership. Because when our member schools commit to common principles and expectations, we all share the responsibility to provide safe, respectful, and inclusive activities for all of our students. To do our best for student athletes and participants, we need to be good partners to one another and collaborate with other schools and the Minnesota State High School League. As school districts, we know our students best. We know our families and communities and caregivers best. And to partner with the State High School League is really to work collectively to make sure that everyone participating in these wonderful events has a safe, welcoming environment where they can thrive and, and be successful. I'm just super excited about where we are and also where we can go and continuing to have these conversations to provide great high school experiences for kids. Nothing is more important than the well-being of our students and participation in activities is a great way to enhance our students' overall health. I think it's really, really important that every high school student finds something to be involved in. Finding some way to get involved in your school and in your community is so important. It not only positively benefits your mental health, but helps you improve as a person, helps you grow, helps you make connections with other people. These activities have helped shape who I am because it makes me understand the importance of being in something and it has helped me for the future because these activities help you gain skills such as time management and communication. Giving students these valuable opportunities is the mission of the Minnesota State High School League and looking around the state this year we've seen high participation numbers, packed venues and enthusiastic support from school communities and together we have a bright future ahead. On behalf of the Minnesota State High School League I want to thank everyone in all of our member schools for your continued active support because it's about more than membership, it's about partnership. Thank you. Thanks. So just a quick question about the video, Colin. Will this get posted out on our website at some point in time for if any community members want to watch it? That was the request of the high school league. Okay, so at some point it'll get posted. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your report. Absolutely. Um, so moving on uh, to item 3.0, approval of the consent agenda, I would entertain a motion. So moved. Second. The agenda has been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Next up is item 4.1, 2022-23 uh, budget amendments. And I'd like to welcome Bernice Humnick, Executive Director of Business Services. Hi, Bernice. Hi, good evening. Thank you for having me. Um, this evening, the first item will be each quarterly budget update provides an opportunity to review the budget variances and make amendments when information becomes available. There is one budget amendment for this reporting period, and the amount uh, will increase the general fund revenue by 416 um, thousand dollars, $195 and 12 cents, and the same for the expenditures. Are there any questions for Bernice? All right, it is recommended that the board approve the budget amendment as presented, and I would entertain a motion. So moved. Second. The budget amendment has been moved and seconded. Any dis uh, further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. So we're gonna keep Bernice up here and we're gonna talk about um, item 4.2, 2023-24 budget. This, e this evening we are reviewing and requesting approval of the 23-24 budget. Page one highlights the general fund 
Nutrition Service Fund, Community Service Fund, Debt Service, and Post Employment Debt Service. We are align aligning the expenses and revenue per fund. Community service, specifically, the food shelf will see a fund balance reduction of 543.106. The revenue will, uh, for the food shelf is projected at 790,000, the expense at 1.3 million, the fund balance reduction of 543.106. Page two highlights the general fund assumptions approved by the board through the um, thorough process of um, monthly and ongoing communication about budget assumptions and all of those details. It also reflects the updated per pupil funding allowance approved by the legislation of $7,138, which reflects the 4% increase. Page three, and it also highlights the general fund assumptions including the weighted pupil units of 12,343. Page three is a continuation of the assumptions and the school board's focus on class sizes and the commitment to providing them with the necessary resources. Page four provides the general fund projection unreserved cap, unreserved funds. The general fund revenue is estimated at 170 million. The general fund expenses 170 million. The fund balance is projected to come at 37.9 million and, uh, and that meets our fund balance policy of two months. Page four provides the general fund projection capital reserves, general fund revenue of general fund capital is 9.9 .9 million of revenue and um, the capital expense is 9.4 million. Page five will highlight some of the insight on the improved leg legislative changes. The general education formula increase of 4%, which is an increase of $275 per adjusted pupil unit has been reflected. The special education cross subsidy accounts for a $2.5 million, uh, $2 million increase. This reflects the 44% for the 23-24 school year. In 2022-23, it was 6.43%. Basic skills, also known as compensatory funding, includes the English learner cross-subsidy. This English learner increase accounts for $282,444 of the increase. The formula that generates compensatory revenue is a concentration formula based on school buildings count of students that are eligible based on educational benefits applications. In 2022-23, the formula was modified to include students that were medical assistant eligible and reported on the direct certification report from the county. So that's why you see a large increase in that amount. And Bernice, Bernice not to, I, I know you're on a roll here, but I, would, I just want board members to know that is a big deal. And it's a, it was a pilot of Minnesota. So thank your, right. your legislators or others who were willing to let us go and, and be a pilot for that direct certification. It really has had a positive impact, right. uh, I think, for all schools, but certainly for us. And the so, families, it's you. great because it's, it's, uh, the pilot is um, in eight states currently. And it's really great because the families or the guardians do not have to fill out the form to qualify. Right. Uh, page six and seven provide details about the revenue and expenditures for your uh, review and analysis. Page eight provides a summary at a glance of spending, excluding operating capital. It is important to note that 76 cents of each dollar is spent on student instruction. Page nine. Free school meals program. Federal reimbursement rates have not been released and state aid reimbursement details have not been released as well. We anticipate budget changes as more information is released. Page 10 provides a summary of this information by program, specifically by lunch, breakfast, and a la carte. Page 11, 12, and 13 highlight the community service fund. 
community service, specifically the food shelf, will see a fund balance reduction. Revenue is projected at 790,000, expenses at 1.3 million, a fund balance reduction of 543,106. Page 14, 15, and 16 summarize the debt service fund and post-employment benefits debt service fund. The principal and interest payments are levied at 100 plus 5 percent, so that's why you'll see more revenue than expenditures. Page 17 provides a revenue analysis of all funds. Page 18 provides an, an expenditure analysis of all funds. Page 19 provides a pie chart of that information for your reference for the revenues. Page 20, a pie chart of the expenses. I would like to um, note that several legislative items are still pending and will be subject to new coding segments, new restriction, and updated balance sheet accounts. And that will be uh, coming through on the revised budget as we hear more information. And at this time, I would like to address any questions related to the 23-24 budget. Does anyone have any questions? Um, well, I don't have any questions because I asked them. Um, I, I've, I've kept you busy um, with my questions before the meeting. But um, I just want to point out you know, the, the, how quick the turnaround is um, for this budget to be prepared. You know, we have to approve a budget um, by the end of our fiscal year, and we've had less than a month um, once the legislative session adjourned to pull this all together. And I, and there are a lot of changes um, that we don't fully know what the impacts are yet. But I think I just want to thank you, Bernice and Chris, your team, for um, doing, you know, pulling together what we do know and um, putting it in a way that you know we can digest it and. Uh, we understand that there will be changes coming um, once we learn more about how nutrition services will be funded and all that. But um, I know a lot of work went into this. Um, it's kind of a crash, crash course in getting this all pulled together for today. So I just, first of all, just want to say thank you. And then I also want to just recognize um, among, among the things the legislature did, um, I think the most important thing, um, as I see it from a school board member perspective and long range planning, is the inflation building in the inflation to the general ed formula. You know, we also have that with our local. Um, and I think, you know, it, it's it's really hard to look in the out years um, and have any kind of sense of, of certainty as to um, our planning and our programming. And I think for the first time in a long time, we've been able to, to do that. Of course, you know, the legislature could undo what the legislature does. Um, but I think for the first time, if you look at the out years in our projections, we're finally balanced. <laughs> and that's, that's really nice to see the out year um, projections being balanced. So, um, and I know you pointed out the dollar um, graphic. We've historically used this graphic um, and bragged about it in our district. Um, it is if you take a dollar, how much of that dollar goes to direct student support and instruction. And we have held, you know, pretty steady around, uh, you know, in the 70s. Um, 76 cents on every dollar is directly into student instruction and support. Um, th that is really, a, that's a, you know, that's a benchmark um, that we, that the state has set and we continue to hit it year after year. So um, those were just a couple things I wanted to point out. Thank you. And I'd, I'd piggyback on that. Um, the inflationary factor, um, you, you'll see many districts, um, it's not that you wouldn't make adjustments, because you would. Um, but you'll see them do projections on out years that show no increase in revenue, but all the increase in expenditure, and you get upside down quickly. And, and that can look and feel really scary. So the fact that inflation actually is there now and, and you see a more balanced picture, I think, is uh, was important and, and very pleased what the legislature did. Um, the other thing in terms of, of the work, we are extremely grateful for the, the additional funds that are coming to public schools in the state of Minnesota. And in doing that, they've created much work for Bernice and her team because lots of them are coming with targeted intent. So behind the scenes, uh, MDE and then Bernice and her team are, are establishing all the new codes. 
So if money is coming from for library aid or student support or special ed, now we're creating all the codes to track the money because obviously the state wants to see a return on investment. If we're giving you money for this purpose, show us that it was spent for that purpose and had an impact. So many new codes with the, the money as well. So um, thank you for getting this together, Bernice and her team. But thank you for all the work no one will see behind the scenes <laughs> that is up, upcoming. Uh, in fact, auditors were here today. I talked with them. I mean, it, it's there's that cycle to this, and and they're already predicting, you know, new GASB standards every year as we move forward. So, thank you. Lots of work for for Bernice and her team and, and everything coming together. So, yeah. thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank, thank you, you, Bernice. It was very valuable to sit down and be able to go through this all of the legislative changes in in great detail. Mm -hmm. um, that I can't express to you how valuable that was to be able to understand that so that we could support this and, and move forward very quickly for the district. So again, I, I'll have to I have to piggyback on that because I just know how much work went into it. And again, you guys did a really nice job providing us with a high level overview and, and really the detail that we would need to support it. So I yeah, appreciate that. Yeah. So are there any other questions for Bernice? because we have an action here, right? right? Yeah. So um, it is recommended that the board adopt the 2023-24 budget as presented. And so I would entertain a motion. So, so moved. Second. It has been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank Thanks you. again, Bernice. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we are moving to item 5.1, superintendent's evaluation. Um, we know Superintendent, it, Superintendent Lennox loves this piece, um, but definitely wanted to highlight. So every year um, we do a mid-evaluation of Superintendent Lennox and then an end of year. And so we compiled all of the responses and so forth. And the chair, Jonathan Weinhagen, who is not here tonight, and myself as vice chair, we met with um, Chris a couple weeks ago and just wanted to um, speak a little bit about um, the wonderful things he's done this past year. So in the first true post-pandemic school year, Superintendent Lennox provided the necessary leadership to bring the district back to the basics of student learning and everything that goes around that to support student learning. Great teachers, safe learning environment, and long-term financial stability of the schools. His management, decision-making, professionalism, and drive toward performance were all hi highlighted this year, and he excelled in all areas. So great job. We know we still have a lot of work to do, and we know it takes a team um, of talented individuals. So you have that talented team. Um, so thank you um, to the team and staff um, that helps um, support um, just Mounds View Public Schools. And looking for, we're looking forward to hearing more about the DOT goals um, for the upcoming school year, because um, we know we still have lots of wood to chop, I'll say. But thank you for a great year and leading Mounds View Public Schools. Thank you. Thank you very much. And, and I would say, um, you mentioned the team. Um, it does take a team, many of whom are my most immediate team in the, in the room with us tonight, but um, across all employee groups, mm -hmm. right, throughout the district, uh, the work we do is really, it's people work, and, and we have great people uh, up and down across this entire district. So thank you to all of them for, for what we're able to do for the student, staff, parents of this community. Yep. It's appreciated. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. All right, so next up is item 6.1, um, updates. Um, we will skip AMSD and legislative updates um, unless you have anything to share with Jim no, being no, gone. Coming, meeting, nothing to report. Right? Okay, perfect. And so Sandra, uh, Northeast Metro 916. So we had our um, last meeting of the school year um, in, on June 7th and had a, a very full agenda. I mean, it was, Lots of contracts to approve, et cetera. So um, a few things I want to highlight. Um, one, the, um, the membership fee was increased, about a 2% increase. Um, I think I brought that before as a draft, but that was um, a final um, action. Um, as it relates to, I think I've also talked about the innovative program 916 is putting together to try to kind of grow your own mm -hmm. and provide some um, innovative 
um, licensure programming for their staff to take it to the next level of, of um, uh, licensure for special education. Uh, we had a presentation by the manager of who's pulling this program together and pretty exciting. Um, they're in the process of submitting the, um, the program to the Pelsby board for a review that happens in June um, with kind of, yeah, I won't bore you with all the details, but in August of 2024, they will admit candidates and begin a course. Um, so there will be kind of two cohorts or two target audiences. Um, there will be, you know, kind of parallel tracks, but one will be um, folks for general education licensed teachers wanting to add ASD EBD special ed licenses. And that will happen with two years in the program. And then there, is, there will be another kind of track for folks who already have ASD and EBD um, um, needing to add like ABS behavior strategist uh, teachers. And that's a one year track. So um, Shana probably is very much more familiar of that than I. Um, but just that's really, you know, as we talk about staffing shortages and our inability to place folks within 916, a lot of it is lack of, of these specialties. So excited about that. And um, I think I've also reported and confirmed that we will be able to, you know, uh, take advantage of the program as well. Yes. Um, so uh, I'm sure more details will be coming on that. Um, then kind of closing that, but then just talking about just general staff at 916, they are, um, you know, continuing to, to work towards filling vacancies um, in, in, in anticipation of the next school year. They um, hired 15 teachers this spring for the following, for this coming school year with um, only eight teacher vacancies left to fill. Mm. So that's very um, exciting development. We're, we're moving, you know, it's getting better. Um, and I think that's, oh, the other thing I want to mention, so as a, their um, diversity, equity, and inclusion um, initiatives and, and work, um, they, we had an update on the, that initiative and how things are going. And one thing I wanted to point out was that they will be hosting on August 16th, um, the 916 DEI group will be hosting a networking for all the member district equity leaders to kind of come together and share, um, you know, share some ideas, build community, et cetera. So if, we have, if our staff hasn't heard about that yet, they will be getting an invitation for that. Um, oh, yes, that's about it. That's a lot. <laughs> it is. We, our next meeting um, is, is we're, we don't meet, they take July off as well, so we don't meet again until August 2nd. So. Great. Yep. Thank you, Sandra. Mm -hmm. um, moving to uh, section um, 7.1, school board member reports. Does anyone have any updates to share? I do. I have a couple things. First of all, I just want to um, congratulate all the grads in the district. It was really fun to be part of graduations um, for both the ALC and for Moundsview High School this year, and to also attend a number of graduation parties for other graduates in the district. So uh, that's always a fun celebration to, um, to be a part of that. I also wanted to mention the Moundsview Schools Education Foundation Rock the Schoolhouse event. Tickets are available. Uh, the event's being held on September 16th um, at uh, the North Oaks Country Club. And uh, for tickets, you can go to mvsef.org or go to the um, district website and find um, more information on the Education Foundation. Really fun event, fundraising event. Um, for those of you who don't know um, what the Moundsview Schools Education Foundation is, we're a, um, a nonprofit organization that raises um, funds to give back to the district um, with the goal of giving $50,000 um, to the district every year for initiatives that we work with um, Chris and his team to, to target. So great fun event. Join us September 16th. Perfect. Thanks, Heidi. Anyone else? Well, I got to join Yolanda um, for the Irondale High School graduation. Um, so that was super fun, um, echoing what Heidi said. And I had the honor to give my daughter. Um, <laughs> still emotional, as you can see. But um, yeah, so it was great. It was so wonderful to see those students. They've worked so hard. So anyone else? All right. Thank you, everyone. Is there anything else to come before the board? We are adjourned.